Hi there, this is Scott Nicholson. I'm an associate professor at Syracuse University School of Information Studies, where I also run the Library Game Lab of Syracuse and study gaming in libraries. In addition, I host the Board Games with Scott series, which is a monthly video series where I teach you how to play a wide variety of board games. What I'm going to talk about today, though, is Wits and Wagers. And so I've done a whole episode on Wits and Wagers at Board Games with Scott. But what I wanted to do is give you a brief few-minute introduction on how this game works. So let's get right to it. So you're going to get this green betting mat as the center of the game. The idea of the game is you ask a question, everyone writes down an answer to the question, you put the answers on this mat, and everyone places bets on which answer they think is the closest. And then the people who bet on the right answer get big payouts. The person who put the right answer down gets a little payout. And you do that seven times, and you see who wins the game. Now, each player gets a marker board, and they're going to put their name across the top. Now, you probably won't have one in your set that says Scott, but if you do, invite me over. I'll come play with you. So everyone writes the name across the top, and each player also gets two of these wager chips. And so there's seven different colors, and each player gets all the stuff of a color. So way around works, you pull one of these yellow question cards. Each one has seven questions, and you read one of them. In the first round, you read question one from a card. And this question says, what percent of the world's surface is water? Now, the answer's on the back, so don't look at the back yet. Now, everyone thinks about that. What percent of the world's surface is water? They think about it, they take their boards, and they write down a guess. And I'm going to guess it is 50. I figure that's right in the middle. Once I've finished, I throw my answer board out in the middle. And then everyone else, as they finish, also tosses their answer board in the middle. Now, again, you can play with up to seven people. And so once everyone's got their answers in the middle, you then flip them all over, and you sort them from high to low. Now, if you have seven different answers, it'll look like this with one answer on each square. If you have an even number of players, let's say we only had six players, then what you do is you leave the middle open if you have an even number of players. If two players give you the same answer, let's say that Eli had also put 50, then you just put the two answers together on the same space. At this point, we're back to an even number, so we leave the middle open. If you have fewer than seven or six spaces, then you're just going to take them off the two ends. So if we had five answers, that's what we do. Now we move into the wagers part of the game. Now you put, have the answers out, and you think of them like a long number line, starting at zero and running up. And so what you're going to do is if you think the answer is small, it's, it's lower than 20 between 0 and 19, you're going to put your chip on this smaller area. If you think it's between 20 and 44, you put it on this area. If you think it's between 45 and 49, you put it here. So again, just picture a number line with these as points on the number line, and you're going to bet on which answer that you think is going to be closest. And so everyone places their bets, and that's what the timer is useful for. As you flip the timer, and while the timer is running, people place their bets. They can put them both on the same thing if they're really confident. They can split them up. They can bet on their own. But everyone's going to throw out their wagers on where they think is right. You can move them around, too. If you think that uh, someone has figured out what it is, you can jump around. And so people will move their bets around until time runs out. And now you evaluate it. So now you read the answer, and the answer is going to be on the back of the card. And the answer is 70.8%. 70.8, so we look at the number line, and so that's going to be here between 65 and 80 on the number line. So this is the right answer. Chris got the right answer. And so what you then do is you take off all the bets that were incorrect just so they don't get in the way. And then the person who wrote the right answer gets three points, and points are represented by these poker chips. The red chips are one. They all say one on them. And so the green player then gets three of these chips. And now you look at the wager. Now here's a trick. The further out you bet from the middle, the more it pays off. If you bet on the middle answer of the group, it pays two to one. But if you bet on the highest answer of the group, it pays five to one. If you bet on it's smaller than everyone's answer, it pays six to one. This one pays four to one. So green would get another four chips and their little chip back. And then blue placed two bets. So two times four is eight. They would get eight chips, and they get their things back. And by the way, there's also fives and 25s in the game, and they're clearly marked. And so blue would get eight points, and green would get four points for his bet and three points for being the one to write the correct answer. Now, if you've earned points in a previous round of the game, you have the ability to wager your points as well. well the way you work is you put the points you want to wager underneath one of your wager chips, and that becomes one of your bets. Now, you're risking those chips. If you're wrong, you lose those chips. But if you're right, then that can really pay out, and that's going to be a huge payout in the game. So what happens is you clear the board. Everyone erases their, their writing on their cards, and you ask the second question off of the next card in the deck. You continue this until you've gone through all seven questions. You total up the money, and you see who wins. 
Well, that's it for Wits and Wagers. This is a great game for small or big groups. It'll work in, in individuals or teams. You can even do it in a big game show setting. I've done it that way before. You can write your own set of questions. You don't have to use these questions. You can create your own set of seven questions having to do with a special event or something that's going on. The answer should be things that a lot of people have an idea about, but no one really knows the answer to. But it can be a great educational game then as you talk about each question. Uh, it adapts well to different settings. It'll adapt to a school setting or a social setting. It works well for different sets of players. People who like knowledge games enjoy it. People who like gambling games get to play the odds and enjoy that. And people who like party games enjoy the social element. So it really hits a lot of bases. It's like Trivial Pursuit 2.0. So anyway, that's Witch and Wagers. Hope you have fun, and I'll see you guys on another little video. Take care, and bye-bye.